Especially with just backed up with the name of Uncharted. Yeah, I know. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Monday Night DNA, or DNA is War. Nice throwback to the 90s for you. So tonight, unfortunately, Rob is not feeling the greatest, so send your well wishes to Rob. We're locked steady, as you know him online here, but we all know it's Rob. So I'm sorry. He's robbed you of an experience of watching him tonight. Um, he was going to close out Uncharted, Drake's Fortune, so the first in that series. Um, however, that'll be postponed until tomorrow night, uh, if he's feeling better. So make sure you subscribe, hit those notification things, and check him out tomorrow night at this time. So tonight for you all, I'm going to play a very special game. My absolute favorite game of all time and I will argue with any one of you that think otherwise and try to prove me wrong that this is not the greatest game of all time because it is I don't care what you all say about Ocarina of Time it's a great game uh, top five for sure but this is the best game of all time so I'm gonna jump into gameplay so I don't 
bore you all to death because I know that's why you're probably here, possibly. So let's take a look at the lit. I hear it's a weird duck. <laughs> so this is the Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. It came out in 1991. So we're gonna create a new file here. Um, we'll link. And yes, no, it's, Zelda. it's not Zelda for you people out there. Y'all ready? Let's do this. Help me, Obi-Wan. Please help me. I am a prisoner in the dungeon of the castle. My name is Zelda. The wizard, Eganim, has done something to the other missing girls. Now only I remain. Eganim has seized control of the castle and is now trying to open the seven wise men's seal. I am in the dungeon of the castle. Please help me. Link, I'm going out for a while. By morning. Don't leave the house. It's a nice shield and sword. You've... So this is Hyrule, and this is the Hyrule Castle, which Ganon has seized control and captured Princess Zelda. Ooh, Link, I didn't want you involved in this. I told you not to leave the house. Take my sword and shield and listen. You can focus power in the blade. Hold the B button. Because that doesn't make sense in dialogue. Then release it using the secret technique handed down by our people. Link, you can do it. Save the princess. Zelda is your... Is my what? So now I have a sword. I can not hurt him because he's dead. I try to pick him up, carry him with me. Or I'm just crying over him. Why? Why? But for real. So these are one of the palace guards here. They have the little short blade. So they're not too difficult to fight here. So now we get magic. And more rupee, so we can light things like that. Some of these things are needed because it'd be dark and you need to light the way. So your sword has many things. You can hold the button down, hit the shrubs like that. You even have this nice spin attack. So this guy has a longer show, uh, sword. Obviously, he's going to give me some problems here. Whose footprints are these? Wrong game. So I don't like to waste time fighting them all, because that's pointless. The real task is at hand, and that's saving the princess. So how's everyone doing? You guys are all quiet here tonight. <coughs> Anyone feel like chatting? Anyone ever play this game before? Comment below if you're not watching this live. But chat me up if you are. Because I really want to hear your thoughts on what you think of this game. And if you tell me it sucks, I really want to know why. I'm curious what type of person you are then. So in this dungeon, you get your first secondary weapon. Obviously, you have the sword of shield, and the lantern's really not a weapon. It can be used as one, I suppose, but not really meant to be. So the first secondary thing you get here is the boomerang. I have full hearts, but yeah, I still collect them. Not sure why. Oh.
So the boomerang acts as two different things here. It can stun enemies as well as retrieve items that are too far for you to reach. Sarah says so she's never played any Zelda other than Ocarina of Time. Really? That's the only one you played? Why and what did you think of the uh, Ocarina? Like if you could find this game anywhere or if you get the SNES Classic or have an SNES, this is a must have. sad day. <coughs> Do you understand? Yes. Let's go. More rupees. Honestly though, if you're going to play a Zelda game, this is the one to play. The soundtrack is amazing. The gameplay mechanics are brilliant. And I mean, just the visuals. Yeah, it's retro now, but I don't know. It's just... This game I will continue playing over and over again until, you know, the end of my existence. And like, this wasn't even the first Zelda game I played. I played uh, The Legend of Zelda on the NES, and I enjoyed it a lot. Like, I really loved that game. Um, but I wasn't... Like, hooked on this franchise until this one. I hated Zelda 2 on the NES. That game was just hot garbage. And then when I got a Super, um, I, I forgot even how I ended up acquiring this game. I know I didn't own it first when I played it for the first time. I had a next door neighbor when I used to visit my dad on the weekends or every other weekend. Um, the next door neighbor is a few years older than me, and he had it. I always used to go watch him play soccer and stuff, but, and I was just so amazed by the game, because it was, I mean, there was nothing like it at the time, visually, and just the depth of the game. And I remember the, it had to have been the year after I ended up getting this game. Uh, it was a summer. I kept slowly getting dungeon through dungeon and um, spending like rainy days on the inside just conquering a dungeon that I hadn't beaten before and slowly progressing and finally finishing the game and beating it. It was the first game of this length that I had actually beat. And to me, that was a huge accomplishment as a gamer. I mean, really, you know, anybody that beats a game feels accomplished, but um, a game of this size, you know, that's, for me, I felt it was impressive. So the goal here is to get her to Sanctuary. Ugh. Don't really need to battle them all. Some of these sections you have to kill all the enemies, one drops a key. Um, sometimes you don't have to do anything like that. I mean, yeah, I feel a good majority of people hated Zelda 2. And I mean, I appreciate that they're trying new things, but, like, it's not broke, you know, don't fix it. Especially after the success that Legend of Zelda had. So you can return to part of this underground area too. Um, 
See, this is an area where I have to kill the enemies to get a key. So a lot of this stuff too, you go back and forth through. That's that's the cleverness of this game, let alone other games um, that do this. But you think you've completed an area and progressed, but then you kind of go back to it and repeat the same task, but there are hidden items that you couldn't get to before, like this. That sound, even though it kind of tells you. But this means it's breakable by a bomb. We don't have any bombs yet, so we can't do anything about it. So there are puzzles like this. This again is a tutorial section of the game. What do we do here? We move that. There are other ones that are more difficult. Ugh. So we're through the tutorial. We have saved the princess. Sanctuary, the bells, the bells. I won't bore you with story here as I'm not gonna do a complete playthrough of it. Just one to uh, gather your interest of this title. So you also get in this chest here your first heart expansion. This is a full heart piece, meaning that my um, meteor increased to four hearts now. Eventually you get two full lines by finding all the hidden ones and beating each dungeon. So now that we've done that, we have to go to the town and find uh, uh, Sir Hasselar, Sir Ravar, Sir Ravar. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Sasparella. Sasparella, yes. I butcher it every time. <coughs> so obviously you can explore. Uh, what button is it? No. There we go. So this is the overworld. Uh, this is the light world. Spoiler alert, there is a dark world. So. Um, you can pretty much go to a lot of the places right now. Not everything, but you can go to a lot of the places. You need to start getting equipment. So yeah, the goal here is in the light world, collect the pendants and get the coveted Master Sword. So there are hidden things here. Let's see. I don't want to do this. Like a pro, got all four of them. If you don't do it right, you have to repeat this. That's one of the trickier first challenges here. And then we have, we get some bombs. Uh, we can get some bombs in this town, but we don't necessarily want to do yet. We want to find a bottle here. Because the bottle will allow us to store things like potion, um, as well as any fairies that we may catch. And we can purchase the first one from him. I believe you can get up to three or four bottles total in the game. And trust me, you do want as many of them that you can find because you want to store as many fairies as you can find. So if you bother some of the townspeople, they call the guards on you too. So if I were to go to talk to that lady, the guards would come in, a couple of them, and I'd have to fight them. talk to someone in the village. I'm trying to remember where he lives. I don't think it was the dude next door.
So in the dark world, this place is a dungeon. And you fight some bat creature, and he kind of alludes to that. This person doesn't like me. So there's the person we talked to. So a fun thing here, I'm going to show you guys this. These chickens, you can pick them up. But there's a little fun secret. I can hit them. Peter would really be upset right now. But if I keep hitting them and piss them off, something magical happens. For one, the frame rate takes a crap. Um, but yeah, uh, they all attack you in a swarm like that. So Breath of the Wild came out a year ago almost now. The first town I went to, there were chickens. You had to gather them and throw them in a pen, just like, you know, Ocarina. So I'm like, hmm, I wonder what will happen if I just start slicing at, slicing at them. Sure enough, they swarm you. I was so happy that they threw the, that into the game. Why? It's it's dumb, but for any like longtime fan of this series, to have something so insignificant in there, you know, made all the difference for the little things that they do for these games. I feel like I should have worn my Zelda shirt when I play this. So, what we have to do here is go to that X, because this will open up the locations of the three pendants, being the three challenges that we have to get through to be able to unlock the Master Sword. So, depending on time here, I'll probably be able to rush through all the way getting to the Master Sword for you guys, and that's probably where I'll end it. But that's, that's my favorite part of this game, is getting the Master Sword. Just the music, the... You'll see when we get there. Just everything about it, the atmosphere, the aura of the place. See? Sahasrala. How do you say that? Sahasrala. I can never pronounce his name. Do you really want to find it? Yes, and of course. I don't really have an option at this point. I'm kind of doing that. So we don't have any bombs yet. There's some things that I can get there. Um, again, I'm not doing this to absolute completion, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm just kind of rushing through. So this area in the dark world is rather tricky. That's a fun section of the game, though. Just not having all my equipment. It's tough starting from the beginning. Mostly the run feature to be able to run with the boots. As you can see, you acquire a lot of rupees. So this is the first dungeon, Pendant 1. It's probably the easier of them. I don't know if it's the easiest, but the, it's the easier one of the dungeons. You eventually get a map too. As you can see, I don't have the map yet. 
Um, I'm only unlocking the layout as I proceed through it. These guys are a pain. So they jump away when you swat at them or swipe at them. So you have to defeat them all. As that opens up the doors. So there are sections of the game that are a lot like that too. So we got the compass, it points to the uh, dungeon boss. So it tells us where we go, it's, he's on the second floor. So you're seeing we're getting arrows now, which obviously is alluding to the fact that we're gonna, we haven't got the key yet, that we're gonna get a bow. <coughs> That's Andrew dying. She's had the flu, so you haven't seen her stream in a while. We don't read anything else out of here. Oh, bad timing. So as you can see, there are different levels that you go back through or parts of the, the map. So obviously these dungeons are very similar to uh, The Legend of Zelda on the NES. Obviously, the visuals here and the layouts are more elaborate, but you get the general feel for the game, and the the styling is still there. It's just much improved over the years. These guys are pain in the ass. So you defeat all the enemies. These little MFers come out, and they're a pain. So this is the master key, or the big key, master key, whatever you want to call it. Now I can get the bow, which I'll need to defeat the final boss. So if I had a net, I could go in here and capture some fairies and put them in the bottle. However, I don't have a net yet, so I can't capture them and place them in the bottle. So I have to have some luck here and do really well with the boss. Such as this, I don't really want to go in there yet. Oh, that's right, I need to kill them, knowing. So, some enemies are immune to some of your weapons. So ideally they want you to use the arrow for this guy because it's stronger. I don't want to waste the arrows as I'm limited to how many I have and they're really helpful in the... I need some hearts. And they're really helpful in the boss. So I have 30 heart or 30 arrows. Very stressful section. So 
So eventually these skeleton guys start to throw bones at you too. Oh, we got our first bomb. So now we can unlock stuff with that. should be at the boss fight. So here's the first dungeon boss. So the trick is to stay in the corner. When you get down to the last one, it gets very difficult as he moves around a lot more. Yeah, doing horribly. And of course the pendant. Here we go, that is your first dungeon in A Link to the Past. So that's the Pendant of Courage. So our health is restored. We've gained yet another heart here. And now we can venture on to get the other two, which I need the magic boots. Uh. All right, buddy. Wow. So with our single bomb, we can go back here and blow up that hole here. So now I got the boots, the Pegasus boots, or shoes. And with that, I can dash. That'll prove to be helpful for the next item requirement needed to get into the Desert Palace. There are a lot more secret areas with these bombs too. There are several actually in the main village of the game. Um, I won't dive too much into wasting time with that area, but there's heart pieces that you can get. There's a lot more rupees and there's other hidden things in the little village. So obviously with this game, there are speedrunners out there that exist. This game can be beaten, um, well, in a matter of minutes with glitches. Without glitches, it's just uh, just over an hour, I believe, is the, the time, which is incredible. Because I feel like I'm pretty good at this game. There's no way I can finish it in that time frame. So we want to go back near the village because we're going to go to the library. The library, why you ask? Because we need a book. So once you get those boots or the Pegasus shoes, Makes traveling the game a lot easier. A lot of people use the um, save and quit because then you can travel back and forth between the sanctuary or Link's house. I don't want this. This is not the library. Um, you can travel back and forth when you load the game back up and it saves time. So if you're speedrunning, you look for any shortcut like that. But we're not speedrunning, so. So this is the book. This is the only way you can acquire this item. So if you do not get the shoes, you cannot get the book. Therefore, you cannot proceed. Even if you got down to the bottom left there for that pendant, you could not proceed without these items. So 
there is somewhat of an order to the game, even though it's open. Um, you can go out of order somewhat too in the dark world. Not fully, but you can attempt to. So, and there's someone said, hi, I missed the thing went away. I'm sorry, I missed it. How you doing? Welcome to the stream. Oh, that was a mistake. So now we're going to attempt to take down the second dungeon here. So I can go in the shallow waters. I can't go in the deep waters yet because I don't have the flippers. Which I can acquire them, but I need 500 rupees. I don't want to go that way. Uh, Philip Carl Roberts said hi. Can I, you run into some vulnerable walls? I can run into some vulnerable walls. So you notice with these levers here, it's always the right one. That's the right one. So what this does is allow me to get a heart piece here. I can always grab one of these fishes too and throw it back into the deep water. They're a pain in the ass to catch though. And I'll show you what this does here. So if I can survive, ah. throw them in deep water he gives me rupees so again a little hidden secret in the game it's one of those things it's just messing around the game you unlock its secrets and even I'm sure I don't know every single one in this game I'm sure there's stuff I missed More bombs. We'll need them. So a fun little thing here. This guy. He just doesn't say anything. Doesn't talk. He just stands there by the sign. Pay no attention to the average middle-aged man standing by the sign. Leave him alone. So I can mess with him, nothing. I can try to talk to him, nothing. However, you take his sign, he follows you. And he's pissed. Why did you take my sign? It says, plain as day, just leave me alone. Sheesh. So now he just follows you. He's really angry. He stole it or broke his sign. When you move on, he leaves you alone. Though. He's gone. But again, another like little thing that they added... That's just comical. Hate these vultures. And the little sand monsters. So now we have another cool section of the game. I can read the book here. I love this part. So this one can be a little bit more challenging. They slowly ramp up the difficulty in these dungeons. This one does pose a little bit more of a challenge. Mostly these things with the eye beams. They're a pain. Oh, I could have used that heart, but that's all right. I dislike those things. So we have, we didn't even get the map in the first dungeon, I don't believe. We skipped right over it. Technically don't need them. 
You don't even need the compass either, really. You just need the keys to proceed. Ugh. Pain in the ass. So the next sword you get, the Master Sword, obviously, is a lot stronger here. So this dungeon holds tricks here. I just want to show you this as an example. That's back out to the front. We don't want to go that way. So there are a lot of traps and tricks. So much like the Legend of Zelda on NES, there are pathways that lead you astray or lead you to your success. So, what we want to do here is find a key, which is here. Remember that little run thing? Ugh, yikes. So, again, they want to make sure you use it. Obviously, you had to use it to get this far, but they want to make sure you're using it. So there's the compass now, points to the lair. So let's take a look at a map now that we have one actually. As you can see here, it gives us the layout of the whole dungeon. The darkened rooms are, are rooms we haven't uncovered yet. So we have a lot yet to explore here. So we got the big key. So we have to find that button. Yikes. I need hearts. I'm replenish some of them. So now, the power glove. Now I can pick up those rocks. Which again, we wouldn't be able to battle the dungeon boss if I hadn't grabbed that. I could get to the area where he's near, but I couldn't fight him because I need to move some rocks. I need some hearts, man. So now, again, if I had the uh, net, I could capture those and store them in the bottle, but I still hadn't acquired that item yet. I should have, really, but I don't need to at this point. So now I can lift up these rocks with no problem. So take a look at the map here. We're getting close to the boss's lair. So the trick to this part, standing in the doorway. Otherwise you're running around the 
and trying to swipe at each and every one of them. Takes a minute. Basically, the pick. So, that's that. Acquire the key I need. Move on. Rooms with just absolutely nothing in them. They like these rooms. These actually happen in quite a few dungeons. But this trick can be accomplished in pretty much every single one of them. And the reason I hold the sword out too, because at some angles from the left, it does actually end up hitting you, or can hit you. With the sword out, it protects you from getting hit. So we have another skull here. They're all the same design too in every room that you do this in. Really could use a heart. Nice. So as you see, you start to use multiple items in your inventory to fight here. So as you can see now, the boss is up above us, but how do we get to him? Well, Let's try lighting all the torches. Little secrets like that. As a kid, I was stumped on this stuff. You, you couldn't Google it back when I was a kid. You uh, put the game down or ask your friends if your friends played the game. A lot of mine didn't. This is not an easy boss, so. that should be really careful running out of hearts One down. Not good. Not good. The last one's even more difficult too. When you solo. Why did I simultaneously kill both of them at the same time? Pure luck. Pure luck. Pure luck. That was awesome though. Wow, I didn't think it was going to do well there. I was really nervous. Pure luck though. That was not skill. So we have the Pendant of Power now. Leaves one more Pendant remaining. So we're making pretty good time here. Alright, feel better. So we're going to head up to the mountain. Death Mountain, if you will. 
Very welcoming name. So I appreciate you guys all checking out this stream tonight. Picking up for Rob, who is out sick. Hope you feel better, man. So there's a hidden thing down here. So you get another secret for you guys. So, yeah, just another place to get rupees. Which at some point we will need 500. We don't need 500 yet. That'll be for another time. Ay, yikes. Normally I want to head into a lot of these dungeons too with a lot more health than I have. Uh, hearts, that is, too. Uh, which way do I want to go? So there are a couple different ways to get around this map. Um, I'm taking this way as I find it a little bit easier. Oh, yeah, there are bees and stuff too. They will hurt you. You can capture them though with your net and put them in a bottle. And they attack enemies. So they can become useful. Another little secret here for you. Piece of heart. So I have half of a heart. Two more pieces and then I go up even more. So there are a bunch of these littered throughout the map. Some of which you have to wait like that until you get certain um, weapons. So obviously I couldn't get here until I had the power glove, meaning that I had to go in that specific order for the pendants. So I guide this guy, he helps me out. So now I get up to the top of the mountain. You lose some frame rate in this area. It's because there's. God. I mean, really? Could that have not fallen? <laughs> that guy couldn't have fallen in a worse spot. Don't want to get hit by that rock. This magic mirror is fun. We'll see what that does in a second here. Ugh. Hate this section. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I gotta get the moon pearl. Pearl. Um, 
you'll see why. So this is a shortcut to save me from getting hit by a bunch of boulders. So I want you guys to take a look at the map here. This is the overworld for the light world. With the moon pearl or without the moon pearl, I turn into this bunny. And here's your first glimpse at the dark world. There's no icons on here yet because I haven't unlocked anything to achieve here yet. I will very soon though. So the game kind of tells you the spot to um, use that mirror that we just acquired. And then we teleport back to the light rope. Another piece of heart. And then we're about to enter the third and final dungeon for the light world. After we complete this, we can acquire the master sword to have our first battle. And so we need keys, obviously, to proceed, but the boomerang is going to come in handy here quite a bit. And you'll see why. A lot of tricks in this one. Um, these guys are annoying. But you have to defeat them to proceed. So we want to fall on certain things. That being the incorrect one to fall on. So we get the map here. These guys remind me of the Resnors in Super Mario World. Those little flame shooting things. Also the little dinosaur guys. Ugh. Did not want to do that. You'll see why I'm trying to hide in the doorway here. an inch in there and it's not letting me. It's another one of those things. We'll show you what it's like to fight them. How annoying it is. There's no way of not, no hearts, wow, of not having to deal with those things. So these enemies are annoying too. This is probably one of the more annoying bosses in the game. Hopefully I can first time it. The reason it's annoying is because these guys throw bones now. So the reason it's annoying is because you essentially, if you fall off part of the map, you have to continue to fight the boss. And by that, you have to start over fighting the boss. So you can, wow, these things take a lot of... Uh, 
Yikes. I'm doing well. I don't want any of that stuff. Should have done that on the way. All right, so let's try this again. So you'll notice some of the areas the enemies don't respawn and some they do that's a neat part of this game <laughs> silly mistakes I just really need hearts, and it's stressing me out that I'm not getting them. There's one heart. So for this, do I want to, yes, I want to leave it like that for when I drop back in on him, you'll see why. So there, we're getting better on the hearts, we're doing better. So did I land this one? Yes. So now I have the Moon Pearl. Which is good, because that's what I needed. So this is the biggest challenge of this area, is after I get through this section, getting to the actual boss himself. So there are hearts in here, which we will need, but... We're going to save that. Okay, got to hit him in his tail. I could use bombs. I don't like to, though. As it's not the most accurate. You want to stay in the open areas because you bounce off him once he hits you. As you can see. Yikes. We're so close. And like every other boss, he gets faster. When you're about to beat him. 
which proves to make it more insanely difficult. First time to getting lucky with these bosses tonight. I'll take it. So we have all three of the pendants now. So we can go get the Master Sword and then take on Storm in the Castle again in Hyrule. Sweet. Hope you guys are enjoying this episode as much as I am playing it for you all. Again, this is one of my, this is my <laughs> favorite game of all time. Um, but it's one of my most favorite ones to return to and play. I've never actually streamed this one for anyone, so this is my first time. But having to be, having the privilege to be able to explain the background to this game and just the, the love I have for it. So now we're going to go into the Lost Woods and find the Master Sword. The scene I was telling you about that is one of my absolute favorite scenes in the entire game. Even beating the game isn't as good as this sequence. So there are hidden fake ones all around, as you can see. There's little areas that try to trick you, mislead you. Little thieves' dens. So obviously this little sword here is not the Master Sword. Ugh, why do I keep getting hit? We need to find our way through this maze. So we need this. We can give this to the witch. That'll be important. You guys ready? So we have the Master Sword now. It's different in color. It is a lot stronger. So they captured Zelda. She's no longer at the sanctuary. She is being held captive at the castle again. So now we head to the castle. There are a couple different entries to the Lost Woods as well. Um, the location I went through is the best way to get to the Master Sword. There's another entrance there above. Eventually you can get more upgrades too to the Master Sword, it's not the final version of the sword. You can get other, better shields too. Yikes.
Really need full hearts. That'd be nice, huh? The reason why I need full hearts, there's something that's really special and unique about the Master Sword. And I'll show you why here in a second. When you have full hearts, you can do that. And it makes it a lot easier to combat the enemies. in the place we started the game. However, this time we need to make our way up top to go through the different levels all the way to the top to have our battle. Without the Master Sword, you wouldn't be able to do that. So again, the items you get are important for you to complete So this, these are two guys now that were holding the princess captive in the beginning of the game. So we get a key here, obviously, to proceed up the tower to the next level. Unlock the fairy. Or got a fairy. hearts as much as I can in here. So Ganon, like the Aganim, Aganim, he's not as difficult as Ganon. Um, he's actually one of the easier bosses in my opinion. He has a few different attacks and it's just reading those attacks. Once you've learned them, you can uh, beat him quite easily. I say that now and then I'll end up dying or something. I think I've only died a handful of times on him. This is not good. full hearts to beat the boss no you don't need full hearts but it's one of those things oh my goodness the worst position I started really bad
hope there are plenty of hearts in here. Two more spin. Come on, give me hearts. I still think I could do it, maybe. Well, maybe not. Oh my goodness. Yikes. This is bad. Usually don't have this much trouble. It's my luck tonight, huh? Probably for the best though, because I need hearts to get through this section. If I have full hearts, that should be a breeze to get through there. We were very close. Without full hearts, this proves to be quite the challenge. Making silly mistakes. these do exactly. The dark stages are tough too. There we go. Whoa, close call. That does something. I don't know what it does. No. No. Crapola, uh, need one heart. One and a half hearts. Yikes. 
half a heart away from what I need. I'll get it here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, wish me luck here. Let's we'll see if I do better now. This is why it's so incredibly important to have that in this section of it. close. It's time. As I mentioned, there are a couple different attacks that he uses. So it's really trying to predict what he's going to do. You can kind of tell from where he's at. So that's one where you can deflect back at him. The lightning bolt, however, you cannot. So there are three different ones. There's the main one that we can deflect. That one, which we cannot. Oh, he'll do the lightning here now, so we're going to stand up to the side. Anytime he goes to the center mill, he does the lightning. It's giving me a lot that I can hit. It's nice. Well met, like a true hero that you are, but I am not ready to admit defeat yet. I will draw you into the dark world. So that concludes the Light World section of Link to the Past. This Dark World now has seven items, seven more dungeons before you can finally come back to this very pyramid to end the game. So you have to unlock these last seven. These are a little bit more open as far as the order. You can get through things out of order. So it's really up to the items that you unlock and go back to the light world to unlock. So now as you see it, we have number one, and then once we complete that one, the other remaining do open up. So the other thing about this area is the enemies are a little different as well. By a little different means they're much like you were a bunny. They have also transformed.
So our heart level's increased. So the guards are now these little pig creatures. So even Ganon was turned into a pig. So we'll head back to, well, I don't think we can yet, actually. I was to say, we'll head back to our house where this all began, but we can't without the hammer. But as you can see, a lot of this is very similar. A lot of this is very different. So much like where we met him in the beginning, he's now a little shrub. So ultimately, there's yet another half of this game. It'll probably take, I'd say for myself, another two hours to fully complete it. Two hours would be probably all I need to get the uh, remaining pieces and then fight him. That's not achieving 100%. I'd say probably for me a good five, six hours for 100% completion on this game. But definitely worth it. I don't have much left to show you. Just want to thank you all for watching the stream tonight. Uh, sorry Rob couldn't be here with you all. He's not feeling well. He's going to try to finish up Uncharted tomorrow, hopefully. And then Wednesday I'll be back with you again for some requests that I had. A request I had with Wario Land, Super Mario uh, Land 3. Um, so you get to play as Wario, and that will be from the Game Boy. So I want to thank you all for checking us out. If you're new, if you're returning, thank you all. Make sure you follow, subscribe comment below check us out on instagram check us out on twitter we post all over the place you can always find us on facebook.com forward slash dose of nerd acumen uh, sign up for anything there as far as your alerts just really keep checking us out and uh we really appreciate everything you guys uh do as far as coming out so till next time see ya